Hi, my name is Matt McDonald. I'm the creator of Axis Game Factory. I'm going to walk you through the steps needed to get you started on AGF Pro. By clicking the New Project button, it will open the New Project Wizard. Please create or select a folder that you would like all your project assets to live under. If you select a folder that already exists, its internal folders will be overwritten. So be careful not to pick a directory that already has assets or scenes in it. Let's click in the New Project text field and give our new project the name. I'm going to name my project Demo Project 01. The next thing I need to do is click the Select button. By clicking the Select button, the new scene window will appear. Select a name for your new scene. This scene will be placed under the Scenes directory in the Project folder. I'm going to name my scene Scene 01 and click the Create button. Clicking the Create button will open the Select Theme window. Select one of the following preset themes to initialize your scene with. Click and drag this slide bar to see all the built-in themes available. Click on a picture that best meets your needs for your scene. After you select the theme picture, click the button to load that theme. It is not unusual to see the loading screen. Some themes and scenes are larger than others. The larger files may take a significant time to load, so please be patient. This is the resolution and quality setting window. Since AGF is made using the Unity 4 game engine, it is a bit different than typical software applications. You will have to set the resolution and quality. The higher the number is for resolution, height and width, the bigger the workspace window will be. By clicking on the resolution arrow buttons, you can change the size of the application windows. This is where you change the quality of the rendering. Your game will look better the more times you click the right arrow. Unfortunately, the higher quality may slow your computer down and make for slower feedback while working in AGF. If this is your first time running AGF, it is recommended that you choose the fastest setting. Click the left arrow till you see the fastest setting appear. You might want to spend some time adjusting these settings depending on the size and resolution ability of your monitor, video card, the scale and detail of your environments, and the speed of your computer. Don't worry too much about getting these right the first time. You can change these settings at any time in the editor and in the different players that AGF has available. Click the Start button to continue. For demonstration purposes, I'll quickly define the three major areas of the AGF Design Mode workspace. The menu windows at the left of the screen are placed in what we call the dock. The window at the right of the screen is what we call the warehouse. The area in the center is the view from the workspace camera. We call it the viewport. The next thing I want to talk to you about is camera control. There are many ways you can navigate the camera around the viewport or the scene environment. The fastest way to navigate the workspace camera is to simply point at a location with the cursor anywhere in your scene. You don't have to click a location, just float your cursor at a point in the scene. Point to a location and press the F button on your keyboard. F meaning focus or frame. The workspace camera will move to that location. Note how the pointed area moves into the center of the viewport. It is important to note that the AGF camera is sensitive to the scale of the object that is attached to your tooltip. Select this smallest cube from the warehouse by clicking on it. As you bring your cursor back to the viewport, you will see that the object you selected is attached to your tooltip. Float the object to a location and press the F button on your keyboard again. Notice how the workspace camera moves to that location and also zooms to fit the object to the viewport. Now let's select a larger object from the warehouse. Select this 4x4 cube from the warehouse by clicking on it with the left mouse button. At the moment the larger object is brought into the viewport, the camera adjusts to fit the larger object's scale. By just floating the object over the terrain and pressing the F key on your keyboard, the camera will move and adjust to fit the volume of that object to the viewport. By using the WASD keys on your keyboard, you can also navigate the viewport camera. By pressing and or holding down the WASD keys, you can move around the workspace. If you press and hold the shift key in combination with pressing or holding down the WASD keys, the workspace camera will rotate into different axes. If the rotation of the camera doesn't feel right to you, 
press the F8 button on your keyboard. This will bring up the camera options window. Clicking on these boxes will toggle the rotation settings if you want to invert the rotation of the camera. You can also rotate, translate, and move the camera by pressing down the Alt key on your keyboard in combination with the clicking and dragging of the left, right, or middle mouse buttons. Rolling the middle mouse button, or wheel, will also zoom the camera. Alt, left mouse button, click and drag to rotate. Alt, middle mouse button, click and drag to move. Alt, middle mouse button, roll to zoom. Alt, right mouse button, click and drag to zoom. If you are using a Mac, AGF uses the multi-touch gestures you can set up in your mouse settings. It is possible to fly the camera around the environment by using the WASD keys in combination with the arrow keys on your keyboard. Use WASD to translate the camera and the up arrow to move the camera up, the down arrow to move the camera down, and the right and left arrows to turn the camera to the right or the left. To expedite workflow, AGF is designed with a radial menu system. To activate the radial menu, press and hold the right mouse button in the workspace and you will see a radial menu appear at the center of the screen. To access windows and features, hover your mouse pointer over the radial menu buttons. When doing so, you will see a line draw out from the center to that active button and additional buttons will appear. If you are using a Mac or a laptop without a mouse, you can press and hold the M button on the keyboard to also bring up the radial menu. By dragging the mouse pointer, you will see the line continue to draw out to the other buttons. A combination of the right mouse button or M key and pressing and holding the spacebar will activate another level of the radial menu. To select any button, hover over the button and release the right mouse button. Now we're going to get into more detail on the side menus, the dock and the warehouse. To maximize the size of the viewport, the dock and warehouse menus at the right and left of the screen can be hidden by clicking these arrows. This is what the viewport looks like when the side menus are hidden. Clicking the arrows again will bring the menus back. These arrows are especially helpful if you happen to be working on a small monitor or laptop. Clicking and dragging on this scroll bar will slide the windows up and down in the dock. Clicking and holding on these buttons at the top and the bottom of the scroll bar will also slide the dock windows up and down. The scroll bar gadgets on the warehouse side also work in the same manner. If you scroll to the bottom of the dock, you will find a controls window. Use this as a reference for the shortcut keys. You can also bring up the controls by pressing the F2 key. Use the controls window as a reference for all your shortcut keys. There are two main areas to the controls window, editor controls and in-game controls. Click on the small arrows on the different categories to see all the shortcut keys that AGF has to offer. It's important to learn the shortcut keys. This will make you very fast in editing your scenes in AGF. By clicking and dragging on the headers at the top of the windows, you can drag the selected window off the dock. If you drag a window off the dock, you can place it anywhere you like over the viewport. By dragging a window back to the dock or the left side of the screen if the dock is closed, the window will automatically snap back into the dock. You can click and drag all the windows in the dock to reorganize the window menus and customize the dock to expedite your workflow. If you want to remove windows from the dock or completely close a window that is over the workspace, click the buttons in the corner. If you remove a window from the dock, the function buttons F1 through F11 will bring back many of the windows. The right side of the workspace houses your warehouse. All your assets are available for you to click on and place in your environment as you like. You cannot drag the warehouse window like the other windows. It is not designed to be moved in that manner. By clicking the Load All button, all the model assets that are available to you in the Asset Packs directory will be loaded. If you happen to close a warehouse window, you can get it back up by tapping the F1 key or going to the warehouse via the radial menu. If you would like to add or subtract assets from the warehouse, click the Manage Assets button. 
Click on the Add button to add an asset pack to the warehouse. Click on the Subtract button to subtract an asset pack from the warehouse. By clicking on this large button at the top of the warehouse window, you will notice a drop-down menu appear. This drop-down menu displays the many asset types that you have available to use in the warehouse. By hovering your mouse cursor over an asset type, you will see that they highlight. To select the highlighted asset type, click on it with your left mouse button. You will notice as you select different asset types, the icons in the warehouse will change to display what is available to use in that folder. Clicking on these small arrows at the top of the warehouse will change the asset types that are displayed. Only asset types that are loaded will be displayed in the warehouse. You can change the sorting of these assets by pack or by type. Choose the sorting that best works for you. This display window at the bottom right of the warehouse displays the currently selected object, the object's name and scale. You can change the viewing angle of the object by clicking and dragging in this window with the left mouse button. The lighting in this display is derived from the current lighting in your scene. If you want to see all the assets you have loaded in the warehouse at one time, click the View All button at the top center of the warehouse window. You will see that a new warehouse window will open. This window is movable and scalable. You can scale this window or place it as you like. You can also close and reopen this window by tapping the F4 button on your keyboard. By rolling your mouse wheel in the window, you will see the contents of the window scroll up and down. Rolling your mouse wheel in any window that has a scroll bar gadget will have the same effect. There are several types of scalable windows that will open while you use AGF. It is important to point out that the scalable windows cannot be placed in the dock. The next thing I'd like to tell you about is the grid editor and how the grid is designed to work with the different features of AGF. First, let's select an object from the default folder in the warehouse. As I move my mouse, notice how smoothly the asset follows the surface of the terrain. Now I'm tapping the Z button on my keyboard. As I tap the Z button, the object will snap to the settings of the grid. Editing the settings of the grid will change the way the object snaps to the grid and other objects in the scene. To edit the grid settings, you will need to bring up the grid editor window. You can access the grid menu by tapping the F5 button. You can also open the grid editor with the radial menu. Knowing how to make use of the grid and its features is very important when building scenes, placing objects, building prefabs, and sculpting terrain in AGF.